Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault 2 and we're back out here in the garage to do a follow-up video on the video I made yesterday about my initial experiences and thoughts with the BNT APR 8.6. This is a 8.6 blackout bolt-action precision rifle that is integrally suppressed or has an integrated suppressor. And I spoke in that video yesterday that uh, I had some issues with it. Some of them accuracy related and some of them mechanical related. And I took the gun back to the range with some different ammunition and got some more time on it. And I have discovered some things and I want to share those with you. And I'm making this video before I'm responding to an email that I got from BNT. I have been honestly so busy this weekend. Uh, I just haven't had any time to respond to any emails but I'm going to do that tonight and hopefully they'll see this video as well to give them uh, some updates because they really do care about making sure that their product is in good shape because um, you know they take a lot of pride in their firearms. I also have to apologize in advance for any sounds you might hear. I have my garage door open because it's hot and muggy out here tonight and it's a little bit cooler outside and I had one of those horse flies or whatever that was flying around and even if I tried to get them out of the garage I'd close the garage and they'd be buzzing around my head going, zzz, zzz. I was like no nope, you're just keeping the garage door open so hopefully the bugs will just get out of here my next door neighbors mowing their yard and uh, edging so you might hear a little bit of that noise so I apologize for that in advance all right so let's talk about and catch you up with my experiences with this rifle and what I talked about in yesterday's video I mentioned that I took this gun to the range because I'm filming content for the proper range report, which by the way, this is not a range report, this is not a review on this channel, this is my behind the scenes channel uh, where I share all of the upcoming projects and stuff that I discovered with guns that I can't kind of flush out into a video on the, on the main channel. Um, so I took this particular rifle to the range and I had accuracy issues. And I could not figure out why I would get a good group, but then one or two flyers every magazine. Like, tight group, flyer. Tight group, flyer. And it was very, very consistent. And I went back to the ranch. So let's talk about accuracy first before we talk about the mechanical issues. Uh, because I have updates on both. So the ammunition I was using yesterday, or two days ago when I filmed the original footage, was Gorilla ammunition that was 300 grain. And I was unsuccessful with it, but on this range trip, I was able to take, I told you, I, I think I showed this in yesterday's video, two different uh, loadings um, that are different, which is the one here. This is the 8.6 Blackout 285 grain ELDM subsonic designed for uh, 12 inch barrels and longer uh, by Halworks Ballistics and I took this to the range and then I also took let's see here and everything I tested was subsonic and the other ammo I took and I want to get this right was the Fort Scott uh, munitions 8.6 blackout and so this is what I took to the range now let me tell you the difference and what I discovered when it comes to accuracy because I could not figure out why. BNT wanted to know was this thing getting baffle strikes, uh, to maybe shoot it unsuppressed to see if I was still getting the flyers. Well, I returned that other ammo to D and he let me uh, have this ammo to try out because I don't have any 8.6 on hand. And I discovered something really interesting. With the Fort Scott ammunition, this makes this gun run like it's designed to be. At 100 yards, we're talking groups like this. Now, when you see the video, I will say, I do have one flyer at 100 yards, or but I know that one for a fact was me 100%. I remember when I fired that round, I realized it was one of those where I just kind of jerked the trigger a little bit, but that one was me. It was not the ammunition, but at 25, 50, 75 yards, outstanding groups no flyers whatsoever so something about this particular gun loves this ammo which i said is what 285 grain it didn't like the it did not like yeah 285 grain it did not like the 300 grain stuff uh it was just inconsistent but this ammo makes this gun shoot like i would expect it to this got rid of all all of the accuracy issues but this is what i started 
today's uh, range trip with, and it was going so good. And I hope the, the footage comes out well, because when I was there, there were some other people shooting uh, unsuppressed, and they were just talking loud and this and that. And so hopefully the footage I get isn't completely uh, terrible, because you hear all the talking in the background. But, but we'll see. When I edit that out, I might be able to do something uh, with, with the audio, but we'll see. Uh, this Then I moved to this ammunition right here. Uh, once again, this is also 285 grain, but it's the ELDM uh, subsonic. And I fired this after shooting that. And I didn't change anything about the optic. So I kept everything. I was like, okay, so this is running great. I'm getting amazing groups. Let's run this stuff. And this shot really, really low, and the group opened up like this. So that ammo, with me not even trying, super tight. This ammo is like this. So I'm discovering that this gun, and what I actually think it is, I think 8.6 is probably going to be a very <sighs> sensitive round. Because I am discovering in my research with about 8.6, there are so many different grain weights, there's so many different loadings of it that you really have to have one that you like and you dial in your rifle for that one or you spend time finding what your rifle likes. Because I think once you find what it likes and you zero it for that, I think you're going to get a very pleasant and amazing firearms experience. But if you're switching ammo, there's just too much variation. Even things that have the same grain weight, if it's not loaded the same, it's gonna react completely different. And this is something that maybe about 8.6 that I don't like. And I'm kind of curious about 8.6 and what it's designed for. They say it's designed for hunting and it's to be a subsonic projectile out to 400 yards or whatever. But I don't understand how you get that type of energy transfer. Now, I'm not a hunter, by the way. But I can't imagine this uh, being an effective round out to 300 yards at subsonic velocities. I mean, it's it's a big pill going down range, but I don't know. I'm not a hunter. I, I can't speak to that. But I really feel like, uh, by the way, I'm sweating a whole bunch. So I am sorry um, if you see any sweat dripping down my face. As I told you, it is hot and muggy out here tonight. But I'm discovering that 8.6 is just a super sensitive round in that if you change even the slightest thing about the ammo, it changes everything about the performance of the rifle. So I shot a whole bunch of footage with this ammo and the accuracy issues with this gun completely went away and it shoots like I was expecting it should or it would. So that's the update on that. And so when I make the range report about this gun, I'm going to have to talk about your ammo selection and what I personally discovered. And of course, what happens to me might be completely different with the experience that you have when it comes to an 8.6 or this rifle in particular. All right, so now let's talk about the mechanical issues, okay? So when I was at the range today, I was having the same issues. And to recap the issues... There were times when I was, of course, let me safety check the gun. As you can see, there is no ammunition in here. Chamber is, is empty. There we go. So I was having issues that I would close the bolt, and I even showed it on camera, that when I tried to pull the trigger, the trigger would be locked like it would not move at all. I would have to open the bolt and close it again, and then hopefully it would go bang. Sometimes I would pull the trigger back and it was like it didn't even reset. It was like loose like it is here. Sometimes it would catch, like slip, and then fire. And of course, that's going to throw your shot. So I was having that issue. And what I discovered, because I had my hand on the magazine today, that this magazine affects the trigger somehow. Now, this gun does not have, as far as I can tell, a magazine safety disconnect. So let me show you what I mean. I will remove the magazine. There is no magazine in the firearm. I will pull the bolt back, close the bolt, and the gun will fire. So with the magazine completely removed, the gun will still fire. So it's not like a Browning high power or any of that, okay? So I was thinking when I kind of realized, hey, with the insertion of the magazine, 
Maybe it's not adjusting the safety or moving the safety, but it doesn't seem to have that. But I did discover, by chance, that when the magazine is in and a round is loaded, and I, you know, of course, charge the weapon, that if I have that little thing where it sticks or it doesn't want to pull back, if I take the magazine out and I would, like, tap it like this, it would go off. I'd be able to pull the trigger. And sometimes when I did that, it didn't fix the problem. But if I drop the magazine and reinsert it, the gun would go bang. So it had to do something with the magazine. It's like, I don't know. It's weird that the magazine can be completely out and the, and the uh, gun would still fire. But it's weird that with the magazine in, if it's not in at specifically the right way, it won't go off. But I did discover it has something to do with these magazines. Now... There is a story I did not share with you because I didn't think it was relevant with these magazines when I uh, first got this gun from D. And by the way, once again, it is like super hot out here. So hold up one second. I'm going to turn on my fan. So you have to bear with me for just one moment. And I'm going to get some air blowing on me here because it is insanely hot. Okay. So there you go. And once again, sorry if you hear a bunch of noise in the background. It's just the best that I can do, but I am sweating like crazy. Okay, so here's the story with the magazines. Now, I am not sure what magazines are supposed to be in this gun from the factory. But it's my understanding that whatever they are, they're expensive. Okay, I think, I think B&T has a magazine that they make for this gun. But there's a compatibility issue. I'm oh, sorry, not an issue. A compatibility issue that uh, with another magazine type, and I forgot the exact name of this one, but this is a Magpul PMAG-10, but it's not one for like an AR-10, okay? I'm not sure what this is designed for. There's, there was a name of it, uh, one that I had never, ever seen before. But D read online or saw somewhere that these were compatible with this gun. And so when he let me borrow the gun, he, he let me borrow two magazines with this, okay? So, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> so when I had um, this here on the workbench, I tried to insert one of these magazines, and it doesn't lock in, and I couldn't figure out why in the world is this magazine not locking in? Is there something wrong with it? Is it not, not going far enough? So I messaged him. I said, hey, what's up with these magazines? None of them are working. Did you give me the right ones? And then he told me, oh, they're supposed to have a slit in them. So I don't know if he bought this one this, this way. Here it is. So here's the, the ones that I guess are unaltered. And then here are the magazines that uh, either he had done or you had to buy it this way that has a little slit in it. And that slit corresponds to the magazine catch in the gun. That's what allows this magazine to lock into place. So, I am not sure if this little slit is in the right place. The magazine seems to feed into the gun, but these magazines might be the issue with the trigger. Now, as I said, I can't figure this out because when the magazine's out, there's no issue whatsoever. The gun would fire with the magazine out of the gun. And when I am here on, on the workbench, I cannot duplicate this problem. So, if I run the action, no matter what I do to this magazine, it always will go bang. It will always uh, fire. I can't duplicate the problem. Only at the range when the magazine is loaded and there's a round in the chamber is there a problem. So, but it's a real problem. I had plenty of issues today with it where it just, the, mag, the gun's loaded, the magazine's loaded, and the gun will not fire. I cannot pull that trigger back until either I rock the magazine, tap the magazine, do this with it, and then it fires, okay? So it might not be a gun thing. It could be a magazine thing. Not 100% sure. But I will have to do some more research and find out more about those uh, magazines that B&T makes. Or maybe these are the magazines that they recommend. I don't know. i got to do that research. But... The trigger problem is associated with the magazine in some way, okay? Maybe it's still the gun, but the magazine is what is causing the issue because I could rock it back and forth, take it out, put it back in, and it fires, okay? 
Now let's talk about the other mechanical issue I was having, and that was extraction and ejection. So a number of times uh, when I fire a round, I open the bolt, the round would simply just dribble out of the gun, or it would be extracted out of the chamber and it would stay inside of the firearm. And the only way for me to clear it is to drop the magazine and the round would come out the bottom of the magazine port, then I could reload the magazine. That problem persists. It doesn't matter um, when it comes to the magazine, it's, its position. So regardless of the trigger issue, and whether it's a magazine issue or the gun, the ejection issue remains the same. But the accuracy issue when it comes to this ammunition has been resolved. So I have figured out that this gun is what I'm going to call ammo sensitive in that you have to have a, a, a certain uh, loading and a certain bullet weight that this gun likes. Because this BNT APR 8.6S loves this stuff right here. I mean, I can't, I can't miss with this stuff. This is awesome. Super tight of groups, very consistent, no issues whatsoever. When I used this, and I had the same settings on the scope at the same distance, the group opened up. Now there were no flyers with this, but the group just opened up. And with the Gorilla 300 grain uh, projectiles and the ammunition, I would have a pretty good group and then flyers. But those flyers would be consistent. So it was not a baffle strike. It had nothing to do with the suppressor. It is completely an ammo issue. And as I said, the more I look into 8.6, I think ammo issues are going to probably be pretty common because you have such a wide spectrum of loadings from things that are supersonic with very light projectiles to subsonic, very heavy projectiles and everything in between. The twist rate of this barrel is extremely, extremely fast. I just, I just feel like it's one of those things that you just have to kind of dial in and this is probably, probably a caliber that would be great for people that reload. I mean, because if you figure out what your gun likes, I feel now that I know it's an ammo issue, you could dial this thing in to sub MOA groups, no problem all day long, very, very accurate. But I think you as a reloader would have to do that experimentation to figure out what works, uh, works best. You might be able to find a factory loading like that Fort Smith stuff that works great, or you might struggle, you know, depending on what you find. You know, as I said, I, I really feel like a good shooter with that Gorilla Ammo 300 grain would struggle with some of their rounds. You are going to get flyers. Now, I know when people watch the range report, when I get done with it and it gets published, I know one of the criticisms is going to be that I am not a very good shot. Okay, and that's going to be a valid criticism because as my friend Matt says, and he, he came up with the perfect word for what I am, I'm a hobbyist. I'm a hobbyist. I like that word because it's exactly what it is. I'm an average gun guy uh, that gets a chance to shoot amazing guns. And I know people are going to say all the, all the accuracy issues were me. And hopefully... Uh, people will see if they watch the range report, and I'll have to put like a caveat in the beginning of the range report, because I think I'm going to format the review and take people along the ride that I went through in figuring out what happened. So I'll probably do like the first part of the range report will be on that Gorilla Ammo, and I'll do it from the perspective of, well, we're getting flyers. Don't know what's what's going on. And then as the range report progresses, I'll say, okay, so we went back to, to the range a whole nother day, did different ammo, here's what I'm shooting, here's my experiences. But I already know people are going to watch five or ten minutes into the video. They're going to come and say, you're a terrible shot, I'm clicking away, you're not you're not qualified. And then, or you need to go get more training. And then click away. And they're going to, their, their comment is going to look stupid because if you watch to the end of the video, you get to see the transformation of what I can do with this gun. From good group, flyer, to super tight group. And it's all about the ammunition. And then you also get to discover that it's a, where is it, a magazine issue 
uh, when it comes to the trigger. But I, I don't know what's causing that. And then, of course, the ejection issue is just, that's an issue with, with, with the gun, 100%. Don't know why it's doing that. So anyway, uh, that's the update on this gun. So at the range today, I had a much better experience when it came to accuracy. And I still struggled with the gun mechanically, but I narrowed down what one of the mechanical issues are. So there you go. That is the update on the BMT 8.6 APRS, a really cool gun. And now I can see the precision that this rifle can do. Like it is a super accurate gun with the right ammunition. So that's the update. I need to upload this, and I also need to go inside and reply to a bunch of emails, including one to B&T, so they know that I was not ignoring them over the weekend. I was just super busy. So there you go. Um, I know this is kind of a long, boring video, but some of you guys might, might care about this because this is what actually I love doing. Uh, this is, to me, this is the meat and potatoes of the Texas Gun Vault because I learn so much. I get to experience things. I get to have issues that I get to solve. And as an INTJ personality type, this is what I love. Because it's my belief that no problem um, is impossible to fix if you have enough perseverance, uh, sorry, perseverance, you know, intelligence, and time. Everything can be solved. And I'm figuring this thing out. And I love the challenge and I love the mystery of it. So we got two things figured out. Accuracy, it's all about ammo. Number two, um, the weird trigger pull, it has to do something with the magazine. So we're walking down the path of figuring this all out. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. And um, if you watch to the end of this video, the word of the day is discovery. Discovery because we are discovering what this gun likes and what the issues are and possibly how to fix them. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.